You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Today I'm putting a special episode of my other podcast, Art Smart, into the feed as a not-so-subtle reminder to please give it a listen and follow Art Smart on your favorite podcast app. Last week was the official start of Season 2 with an episode on modern art. I'm going to play that episode now, and if you like what you hear, search for Art Smart on your podcast app and listen to this week's episode on postmodern art. Welcome to Art Smart from Who Arted, your guide to quick and easy art history. We're cutting through all that art world jargon that doesn't make sense to anyone because art is for everyone. Welcome back to Art Smart. For this season, we're going to be focusing on different movements in art history. To the average person, the use of modern in the art context might sound a little strange. Modern generally means related to the present time. And yet, in the art context, we're talking about modern as stuff like a hundred years ago. There's not a specific date when the modern era began. Most art historians tend to say the shift to modernism started in the mid to late 19th century. This was an era of rethinking the old rules, breaking free from the established traditions and experimenting with new ways of working. There's not one specific artwork that ushered in the modern era. It was not birthed on one specific day. It was an evolution. But if I were to look at a dividing line, I would say the modern era started around the time that Daguerre gave us his photographic method. Photography becoming more accessible changed the way artists worked. In a way, painters were liberated because they no longer needed to focus on capturing an accurate likeness. Those who wanted realistic pictures could simply take a photograph. Of course, the new technology could also threaten their livelihood, as patrons could now choose between a painting and a photograph for their portraits. Regardless of whether artists considered the new technology as an opportunity or a threat, the end result was artists experimenting and becoming more abstract. They focused on things the camera could not capture. At first, the Impressionists looked at color. Then Post-Impressionists moved on to the expressive qualities. As I said, the work became increasingly abstract until artists like Jackson Pollock were simply dripping paint onto the canvas. So what's the connection between Impressionists focusing on what they saw and Jackson Pollock's action painting? Why do all these movements fall under the modern umbrella? I would say the through line with modernism is a philosophy rooted in the idea that artists could capture some objective truth that would make the work timeless and universal. The Impressionists were focused on optics and how the human eye perceives color. The Abstract Expressionists ran with the modern quest to distill art down to its fundamental elements, and they took it to its logical conclusion. They broke art down to the basic elements like line, color, and texture to create a sense of movement and an expressive composition that was free of specific subject matters that tied it to a certain time and culture. While a person's clothing may go out of style, and I am painfully reminded of this fact every time I see pictures of myself in the late 1990s, colors, lines, and shapes don't make me cringe decades later. While the modernists thought they were getting at something that was deep and innate in the human psyche that would always connect to their audience, artists who came a little bit after that said, we've got to carve out our own path. We've got something different to say and different to do. And so they developed the postmodern philosophy after the current time period. Wait, so is postmodern art coming to us from the future? I guess you'll have to tune in next week to find out, because this week we're focusing on just modernism. And after the break, I'm going to share a few examples of great modern art. Now, to give you a better understanding of this time period and this style of work, I'm going to give you a few artists whose works you might look at if you want to see it for yourself. If I were curating a collection of just five works to represent modernism, here would be my picks. 
Claude Monet's Water Lilies. The Impressionists' shift to everyday subjects and focus on optical color theory really got it all started. Rodin's Burgers of Calais. Rodin was considered the father of modern sculpture. This is one of my favorite pieces of his, as he captured the authentic range of emotions to help people connect with history in a new way. Pablo Picasso's Guernica. Cubism was extremely analytical, looking at subjects from various angles, and in this piece, we see that analytic approach to an emotionally charged scene to unite people in outrage over the horrors of war. It is a powerful piece, and one of his finest. Jackson Pollock's number one. It's one of his drip paintings. To be honest, I feel a bit conflicted because Janet Sobel was making paintings using drips before Pollock, and her work was an influence on him. But in putting together a tiny collection, I'm going to list the bigger name. Of course, that's not going to stop me from cheating a little bit and linking both of them in the show notes. Vasily Kandinsky's Yellow Red Blue from 1925. His artworks and his writings were hugely influential.